Today I'll briefly describe how I separate the low back, the lumbar spine, into three separate regions when it comes to testing of the lumbar spine and or treatment of the lumbar spine. For patients presenting with low back complaints or complaints anywhere from the buttock down to the toes, I'm curious if the problem is a mechanical problem in the low back, which means one of the joints is not moving well or more than one joint's not moving well. And we can move it mechanically in a specific direction or two repeatedly to get it back on track and restore normal health and function to the joints, thereby restoring signs to normal and abolishing symptoms. For most patients, I find this is indeed the case. And I find this by using repeated movement testing. There are other disorders of the low back, and of course there are separate extremity disorders, but I think about it as mechanical joint derangements, first and foremost, and if it's not a mechanical joint problem, maybe it's structural, degenerative, or inflammatory. When it comes to the lumbar spine, like other parts of the spine, like the neck and like the mid back, I treat it macro unless I need to get micro. So for example, lumbar extension in lying. If we're thinking about that procedure and the three different parts of the lumbar spine, when the patient pushes up in extension, say the hands are here, the patient presses up into low back extension on her stomach, the entire lumbar spine is extending. Now say there's some efficacy to that movement on the patient's improvements in signs and symptoms, but we're not getting all the way there. So we investigate adding more force, a hip sag, and then next, we would investigate adding some overpressure, either with my hands, with a towel, with a strap, etc. But when it comes to this, if we're not getting the best results by just adding force willy nilly, I will separate the low back in my mind into the lower lumbar, the mid lumbar, and the upper lumbar. So let's take an example of someone's sign who has pain with a deep squat in their low back and left knee. So I'll have that patient perform that squat, will get the signs and symptoms from that squat. It's provocative in this case. And then I'll have the patient do the lumbar extension and we've proven that just doing it without overpressure is not effective. And doing it with overpressure, we need to investigate sometimes where the hand placement for the overpressure specifically is. We need to investigate if it really matters how precise we are. In most cases, we can kind of be generic and macro about these things because the extent of the lumbar spine is only a few inches. But in some cases, we need to be more precise. So if that person does the squat, I'll have the person lie on her stomach, press up, and I'll apply the pressure at the lower lumbar spine. So L4, L5, S1, 10 or 15 repetitions, for example, depends on the patient presentation, retest the squat. If it's not better, I will move my hands to the mid lumbar spine, 10 or 15 repetitions of the extensions in line, retest the squat. If it's not better there, put my hands up higher, looking more at L1, L2, and sometimes I even go up into a fourth layer, which is the thoracolumbar junction, the TL junction. Therefore, we're getting into the thoracic spine, but we retest the squat each time. So for those patients who don't respond, respond to kind of macro movements of the spine, I do get more precise when it comes to placement of the external overpressure. And of course, when patients go to the highest level of force manipulation, uh, precision also matters. It matters which joint you're manipulating in a lot of cases. So for this particular example, lumbar spine, repeated movement testing of lumbar spine, spine extension in line with overpressure, we can separate the joints of the lumbar spine into three discrete areas and use it as a testing for cause and effect on the patient's signs and symptoms.